morning. morning Lovely, nice to hear your booming voice. I hope you had a great weekend and let's hope you have a, another long weekend coming, right? Okay, uh, today we will have the last uh, session of the first unit of the course. The first unit of the course said design features of language. design features of language. In other words, in other words, what are those features, those characteristics of language that make it such an efficient, such a versatile medium of communication? You can talk in dark, you can talk while running. In India, we talk even while eating, do not we? Yeah. Most family quarrels happen at the dining table, right? Other animals cannot. A, cannot, a dog cannot chew the bone and can also be quarreling with other dogs. Okay? <coughs> we, have, we, we have that kind of. So, what is you know, so unique about language? It is there in the design of language. The way nature has designed it, the way God has designed it, language has some uniqueness. And we have been talking about these unique features. <coughs> we said languages. Can you name some features, please, everybody? One by one. It is species specific. Only human beings have it. Then? Species uniform. All human beings have it. Then? It is culturally transmitted. That is, we have to be part of a group, a family, an orphanage, a hostel, you know, does not matter which hostel, does not matter which family, but you have to be a part of it. The child may be born to a Chinese parents, but may be in America and can learn American English. Okay? Any other feature? It varies. Come on, please. Give me at least, it is open ended. It gains words and it loses words on a daily basis. Words, sounds, features, anything else? Creativity. Creativity. There are lots of other features. You know, people count 15, 16. Many of these features, now I am going to talk against myself. I am going to contradict what I told you. Many of these features may or may not be unique to human beings. We do not know. We do not know that dog language is not there in all dogs. Our dogs cannot talk about you know, uh, meat or biryani or telangana or you know, JEE. There are some features, please pay attention. There are some features which are, now pay attention, I am going to say the key words, which are indisputably human language specific. Please write. Indisputable features. What are those features? We have recorded dog language and we have found that it does not have as many variations. Okay? You can do actually, I am going to give you some uh, assignments. You have to do term paper for 30 percent of the course okay? and you can take one of these things and you can examine how a dog talks to another dog. After all, they do. Okay? Or how a parrot, how a bird, how a you know anything, any, any other creature, how does it communicate? People have studied ants, people have studied reptiles, people have studied birds. Okay? There are those studies or you can study children. How does a multilingual family teach its child one language or another language. You can do a term paper on some of these things. But there are some three or four features which are decidedly unique, peculiar to human language. Only human language has it and these are parts of its structure. It is these features, it is these characteristics of 
natural languages, human languages that make them unique, that make them versatile, that make them do what they do. We call them, please write, structural features. So far, we have talked about cultural features, learning features, use features. Okay? Now, we are talking about structural features. We talked about a whole lot of cultural features. Language is culturally transmitted, language varies from village to village, from university to university, from hostel to hostel or college to college. We talked about all that. Today, I will take about half an hour telling you about structural features. Number one, please write. Language has the feature of displacement. Natural languages, human languages can talk about tomorrow, can talk about yesterday, can talk about another country, can talk about another age. Last week, I gave you the example of Gulliver's Travels, talks about another place one has never been to. Time machine talks about another time. How does that happen? That happens because human languages have something called, please write, Tense, T E N S E. It has the feature of displacement. What does it mean? It means that human languages can go beyond time, time, and place. They are not bound, you know, children's language. In the beginning, you will see children can only talk about here and now, doggy, pen, book. Similarly, you know, many animals can also talk only about the present, immediate context. A dog can bark at a stranger, but a dog cannot tell its master that the same stranger was here at the gate looking at your daughter or your son. Okay. Right? No dog can tell its master, no matter how much it loves it, because the dog does not have the capacity to talk about yesterday. The dog does not have the capacity to talk about the next street it visited and had a wonderful bone to chew there. It cannot. Human languages have. How do human languages have that? They have the feature of tense, because of because of tense. Look at this sentence, you know. Look at this sentence. The baby will need it tomorrow. Does the baby need it today? Say yes or no, please. No. Did the baby need it yesterday? No. How do we know it will need it tomorrow? Because of will. Even if I remove need, will, even if I say the baby will need it, does it mean present? Does it mean present or does it mean future? Future, obviously future, you know. The baby smiled yesterday. You know, there were a lot of celebration. Mother sang a song, made a phone call to father or actually father sang a song, made a phone call to mother who was in the office, okay, etcetera, etcetera. Even if we do not have yesterday, we would know it is past. How shall we know that? Because there is? E D there, and that is there in all our languages, not just English, even in Hindi. Bacha to kal hasatha. Okay, in Telugu, how would you say that in Telugu? Okay, and the child cried mostly. Okay, you don't need to say yesterday. You don't need to say repu netiki. Okay, you don't need tomorrow, yesterday. The tense does it. Okay. Look at this sentence. The director is likely to meet the minister. Has he met? No. It is future. He may meet. So, there are elements in language like tense, like adverbs, like time markers, which help you go beyond 
the present, which help you go beyond here, beyond now. Look at another sentence. The director has lunch with the actors. Is it talking about tomorrow? Say yes or no, make a mistake. Does this sentence talk about tomorrow when you say the director has lunch with the actors? Yes. No, it is not about yesterday. You know, it, it is about every day. The director has lunch not at home, the director has lunch at wherever he is, but he has it with his actors. Okay? But if we say the director had lunch with the actors, then it is past, it is yesterday. If you say the director will have lunch with the actors, then it will mean tomorrow. It will be so language has elements and all languages have it. It is not that only English has it, it is not that only Sanskrit has it, it is not that only Telugu has it. What you call tribal languages, what you call child language, what you call any language, any natural language has this ability to go beyond here and now. Similarly, you know, you can talk about distant places. The baby comes, you know, people, children often ask, where does the baby come from? And many parents, you know, do not tell them the truth. They tell them baby comes from God, a baby comes from God's home. Okay? So, this element from tells you of a place which is beyond here, which is not here. When you say from, that means you are talking about another place. When you say to, where do sinners go? Well, sinners have fun, you know. Uh, they do not suffer, many people say, but I do not know, I have never been to hell, you know. Some people say that sinners go to hell and hell is a lot of, you know, bad place, small rooms, no windows, no breakfast, almost like Ganga hostel, okay, <laughs> right, or any other hostel. For newer hostels I hear are bad or worse perhaps. Anyway, you know, so, but we have never been to hell, have we? but we can still talk about it. How do we do that? We use words like from, to, will, may, likely and all languages have this capacity. Not, it is not just English. So, they can go beyond here and now. This is one strong feature of language. Okay? Any doubts? Any questions? Shall we go to the next? Right. Look at the next structural feature. Language is systematic. There is a bit of arbitrariness in meaning, you know, and we do not know. Therefore, we call it arbitrary. But at the moment, you know, in the state of the art today, we believe that meaning has no logical correlation with sounds. Any word can mean anything and any meaning can have any word. Okay? I gave you examples last week that in some language BV is wife, in another language BV is mother. In Punjabi, mother is addressed as BV, but in Hindi or Urdu, BV is wife. Okay? A lot of things can happen. There is no reason why bottle is called bottle. There is no reason why cake is called cake there is no reason why x is called x. Okay? It is arbitrary. The connection between meaning, you know, as Shakespeare famously said, call rose by any name. Do you know this line? Okay? Look up Google Shakespeare today. You know, Sometimes, you see, these are the great gifts of mankind. Before you are 30, before you are 30, it is a choice. You know, This will mean the difference between you and another student. Before you are 30, you should have read at least one play by Shakespeare, at least one play by Kalidasa and Valmiki, at least one novel or a story by Tolstoy. You know, it is like you know, great gifts of mankind, like Mount Everest, like sunrise, like sunset. These are the gifts of nature. Okay? Come back to it. The second feature in language is, language is systematic, meaning and word may be related arbitrarily, we do not know, but everything else, particularly the structure is 
structure is systematic, language is systematic. Number 2, now what do you mean, what do you mean when you say something is systematic? You mean two things, when something is systematic it means you can write rules about it, you can predict, you can say this will happen, this will not happen, you can say this is possible, this is not possible. So, you have units and you have rules. Look at one simple example, in all languages of the world only certain sounds can come together. Say for example, in English words you can have a word beginning with P R, okay? you can say prayer, priest, proof, prize, you can have a word going with K R, you know the sound K R, letter may be C. So, you have crush, creed, cruel, you can have G R, great, greed, okay? but you cannot have a word ending in P R. Do you have a word ending in P R? In English can you think of a word that ends in P R? that ends in K R, that ends in G R, it does not. In all languages you know, you can do actually, please write, you can do a term paper on possible sound combinations in Telugu and I will give you 30 on 30, actually I will give you 31 on 30. If you brought good examples and just made a list, these sounds are possible at the beginning, these at the end, nothing else, finish. I am not asking you to go for complicated, you know, uh, uh, swim in uh, Vijayawada. Is Vijayawada going to be part of Telangana or uh, Andhra? Thank God. Okay. Yeah, a great place, you know. Yeah. Except, you know, that they ruined the river there. It was the mightiest, the best river in India, the Krishna. But anyway, you know, uh, we will talk about that later. Okay. So, you know, there are constraints you cannot have anything anywhere. You can have only certain combinations at the beginning, only certain combinations at the end. In English you have words that end in R K. Give me a word. Hark, park, dark, park, bark. Come on, give me some more please. This side. Okay, right. But you have no word that begins with R K. Do you have a word in English which begins with R K? I do not know. If you know it, please tell me. You have, you can have words in English ending in L K. Give me uh, milk, bulk. We, we will not say chalk because we are talking about speech, not writing. In chalk, L is silent. Okay. So, bulk, milk, hulk, sulk, hulk. A walk again L is silent, yeah? Silk. Silk, lovely really, you know, the best that China gave to India, right? Similarly, we can have words ending in N K. Give me words. Drank, sink, thank, crank, bank, are the most important place. Monk, okay, blink. But can you have a word beginning with N K? In English, these things differ from language to language. If you have you heard of a language called Swahili, where is it spoken? Africa. Africa. Which part of Africa? Africa is a huge thing. It's like Andhra. Okay. Uh, no, you can say East and Central Africa, Nigeria, Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania. You see, you should also sometimes look at these things. These are the markets. You see, these are the people, these are the countries, communities you have to be friends with. Okay. Look at many other countries, you know, they have a huge presence there. India during the British time had a presence in Africa, but not now. Now, China is the dominant player in Africa. All roads construction, building construction, power plants, Chinese are building and they are doing a fantastic job. That is where the next generation of challenges for a structural, mechanical, aerospace and chemical engineers in this country lie. Okay? So, learn about them, learn about the culture 
and answer those challenges. These are challenges not just of Africa, these are the challenges of mankind. How can you create high efficiency, low cost engineering devices? Okay. So, there is language called Swahili where a word can begin with NK, okay, but not in end in NK. See, there is some kind of symmetry, there is some kind of mirror image. All languages have constraints on what is possible in one place, but not in another. What is possible in another place, but not in one. That is what we mean when you say language is systematic. There are constraints. Okay. Let us go further. Let us see. Meaning also depends on combination. When you say, when you talk about structural feature, when you talk about structural features, you have prepositions, you have tenses. Okay. How do you pronounce this word? Preposition. How do you pronounce this word? Preposition. You know, you have prepositions, you have tenses which help you. When you say something is systematic, that means it has constraints, it has rules, it has units. Okay? Similarly, because of these constraints, we can say it is meaning is not just the property of words. Meaning is the property of combination of words. Look at this thing or combination of units. You have k i l sound and l i k the same sounds in, in the first pair. Does it mean the same thing? Yes or no please? k i l and l i k. Look at the screen. K I L and L I K, you know, I am talking of pronunciation, not a spelling. Kill has the same sounds, lick has the same sounds, but do they have the same meaning? Yes or no? No. No, no because in human languages, unlike other languages that we know of, meaning is the property not just of units, but of the, please write, combination of units, the way they combine. The same words, same sounds, same syllables combined differently, they will mean different thing. Okay. Say so, tell and let have the same sounds, but do they mean the same thing? They do not. They have different meanings. Or words, look at the, this phrase, hope in the soul, it comes from church. Okay. We go pray, we, you know, it is temple. You know, we need, Newton said, even if there is no God, let us invent one, because it keeps us from suicide, it keeps us from depression, it brings us hope that God will rescue us tomorrow. So, hope in the soul, they have the same words as soap in the hole, but do they mean the same thing? Do they mean, do not worry about spelling, you know, worry about pronunciation. Hope in the soul and soap in the hole. Okay? Similar sounds, matching words, matching sounds. Do they mean the same thing? They do not. One talks about prayer, church, temple, the other talks about bathroom, cleaning, etcetera, etcetera. Okay? Or look at this John kicked Mary. Bad, no? This should not happen. When Mary kicked bad, sorry, Mary kicked John. Again, bad, should not happen. But do they mean the same thing? In one case, John will be arrested. In the other case, Mary will be said, wow, well done. <laughs> so, you, but you know, they, you know, let alone arrest or let alone law, do they mean the same thing? Say yes or no, please. No, no, no. Ah, only so, John kicked Mary and Mary kicked John have the same words, but they have drastically different meanings. Why do they have different meanings? Please tell me. because they are combined differently. Earlier it is A, B, C, now it is C, B, A. Okay. It can be lots of you know, permutations, lots of combinations are possible. I gave you last week the example of this famous sentence, how punctuation, how pause can change the meaning. When you say a woman, 
without her, man is nothing. How many men believe that? Well, you will. <laughs> okay. A woman without her man is nothing. How many men believe that? Okay, I see lots of hands going up, you know. In other seminars here, maybe you are frightened of camera. But I asked this question at the research scholars seminar recently. There were 400 people, at least 300 hands went up. That a woman without her man is not. You see the meaning? The same words differently combined can give you different meanings. It is not the property of other lang animal languages. It is not the property of you know a lot of other kinds of uh, modes of communication. It is in human languages that units alone do not have meaning. Units have part of the meaning of course, but a lot depends upon how these units are combined, how these units are put together. It is the because of this structural property that language can also be ambiguous. Please write. These are all structural property. It can be ambiguous. What, what do you mean by ambiguous? What is the meaning of the word ambiguous? Sure. It can have more than one meaning, not sure. Do you mean x or do you mean y? Okay. It can have, you know, look at this sentence, baby swallows fly. What does it mean? Right. So, if, if you take baby as the noun, are, you, are we together? Now, I am talking complex things. You will have to be mentally awake, not only physically awake. Okay. If you, if you if you, if you mean baby as noun, then it has one meaning. Who swallows the fly? Baby swallow. Baby eats the fly by mistake of course, or baby does not mind. Okay. Babies are emancipated creatures, do, they do a lot of things. Okay. But if baby is an adjective, then it has another meaning. That is, the swallow is a bird. And it is not the big swallow, but the baby swallow, the little swallow, the small swallow flies. Then fly is not a noun now. What does it become now? It is a verb, baby swallows fly. So, you know language can be ambiguous. It can give you different kinds of meanings depending upon what you intend. That is how poetry is written. That is how jokes and puzzles and a whole lot of interesting thing which are not there on the menu of a restaurant, you know, which are slightly unpredictable, which give you poetry, which give you music happens, you know, but for these things do not happen. Look at the next phrase, when you say son of Pharaoh's daughter, look at this phrase please, son of Pharaoh's daughter. Who is the grandchild? The he or the she? Who is the grandchild? Is it the son or the daughter? It is he if you mean it this way. Sorry, pardon me. If you mean it this way, then this is the grandchild. Pharaoh's daughter has a son. So, Pharaoh is the grandparent, daughter is the parent and son is the grandchild. But if you mean it this way, Then who is the grandchild? Then daughter, she is the grandchild because this is the grandparent, this is the parent and this is the 
grandchild depend upon what you intend how you mean how you bracket or take a sentence like flying planes can be dangerous visiting relatives can be nuisance okay borrowing friends can be a nuisance you know friends who borrow your mobile phone friends who borrow your money but never return friends who borrow your cigarette don't buy their own okay they can be a nuisance or borrowing friends taking somebody else's friend so you know flying planes what do you mean the act of flying the planes or the planes that are already in the sky so you know the ambiguity can come into the sentence because of these things and depends upon how you mean it look at the next sentence policemen were stopped were asked were ordered to stop drinking at midnight who was drinking policemen two or three interpretations were are, are possible policemen were drinking and they were told don't drink somebody else was drinking and policemen were told oh you boot them and take their drinks away okay or when were with the day drinking midnight or the order came at midnight what is possible policemen were ordered to stop drinking at midnight were they ordered at midnight or were they expected to stop at midnight allow at other hours a whole lot of ambiguity is possible even in ordinary sentences and why is this possible it is possible because please the most you know singular feature the most distinctive unique feature of language even if language didn't have anything else if it had this feature the language would be a unique system of unique medium of communication the ambiguity comes to language because of the duality of a structure please write we know these when we talk about structural features we say it has the capacity for displacement it is systematic it can be ambiguous all this because all this because language has dual structure not just one not just linear you know by dual structure we mean it can be this way okay it can also be this way it has not only linear structure it also has vertical structure okay every time you select a sound say for example when you say you take p now s is not possible what is possible after p in english a any vowel some consonants but not k not possible here but k it we take it from a class we take it from a class you either have p p or you have k or you have t or you have x or you have y but not everything so you have one vertical structure okay and you have the other linear structure when you say p you can either take a consonant you can either have a r or you have a l or you have a vowel okay take a word take a word okay when you say a then after a you can only have something which is countable you cannot say a water can you please yes or no no we cannot after a we can say book after a we can say boy after a we can say building but if it is an then we can say apple egg elephant okay 
each choice, you know, we have this kind of a structure. If this, then that. And the, we have this kind of a structure, either this or that, okay? If x, then y. Here, if x, then not y. You make a choice. This is called, please write, this is called a paradigm. Can you catch it? Can, can the camera catch it please? Yeah. Okay. This is called a paradigm, a Latin word, it is class. This is a class. From each class, you take one. So, for example, look at the earlier sentence, baby swallows fly. Baby is either a noun or an adjective. It cannot be both. What do you mean it? Tell me please. Do you mean it as a noun or do you mean it as an adjective? If you mean it as a noun, then the next word is a verb. But if you mean it as an adjective, then the next word is a noun. So, you know these constraints, these are exceptionless constraints, constraints on choices. And you constantly make Every time you speak, you make a multi-level choice at the level of sounds, at the level of words, at the level of sentences, at the level of below sounds. You have linear structure. If you choose x, then y, then z, then this. But if you choose x, then not y, not z. You, know, you make choice from the class and you make choice from the combination. Okay? Class related, many people call it, please write. This is called paradigmatic choice. I will write it. Can I write here? Linear choices, sorry, vertical choices, paradigmatic choice. You take from a paradigm, you take from a class. Okay? paradigmatic choice or vertical choice. Vertical choice says from each class take only one and then what you choose will determine what comes next. But the other choice is called, please write, syntagmatic choice, you know syntag linear syntagmatic choice or horizontal. Okay? Many people call it choice of a class and many people call it choice of combination. <coughs> Constantly all along, no matter what you speak, even if you speak only one word, somebody says, asks you, are you, are you free this evening? And you say, yes. It is a whole lot of paradigmatic and, intag, uh, you know, and syntagmatic choice. When you say yes, it means yes, I am free. Okay? When you say no, you mean no, I am not free. What is the syntagmatic paradigmatic choice here? It is either yes or Please complete it. No. What is the syntagmatic choice? Yes, I am free. No, I am not free. Okay? So, uh, the smallest possible sentences or the longest possible sentences, no matter how big or small, how long or short your utterance, these choices are there uh, all across and that is what gives ambiguity. If you, if you mean son of Pharaoh's daughter is ambiguous, this is because what is the relationship of son? Is this the head of the phrase? If this is the head of the phrase, then this is the parent. If this is not the head of the phrase, then this is not the parent, you know. So, you have to decide constantly when you speak 
And because your mind, your brain is so versatile, it does not know parent has sat down and has told you today's son, you know, like you got coaching for JE, like you got coaching for a lot of other things. Nobody sat down and told you today I am going to tell you about paradigmatic choices. Tomorrow I will tell you about syntagmatic choices. No, a child and his brain as a child is born or even before the child is born, the child observes and finds that all along take any sentence you like. Okay? When you say language can be ambiguous, then you decide language is a noun. After that you require an auxiliary verb. Auxiliary verb can be either can or may. You decide to take can, but when you say take can, then you require another verb. You can say can go, can be, can happen. You simply cannot say language can ambiguous. Can you say that? You, you can't because a word like can, a word like can demands, a word like can demands another verb here. You can say can go, can happen, can live, can die, can fail, can pass, but you cannot simply say uh, X can IIT. You can say X can enter IIT. X can exit IIT, X can destroy IIT, X can give great gifts to IIT. But when you say can, when you choose an auxiliary verb, then except in one or two situations, you have to have a main verb. But the choice is constantly there. Can is not the, can is not the only auxiliary verb in this class. What are the other class, other verbs? May. May. Might. Give me. May, might, could, should, shall, will, would, ought, must, need, many. In Telugu, what are the choices? Come on, may take a minute, please. Write a list of auxiliary verbs in Telugu. Do you know Telugu? Those who know, okay, in your mother tongue, I mean. Those who know Hindi, please write it in Hindi. Is it that only English has auxiliary verbs of this kind? Do you have something like can in Hindi? Hai ya nahi hai? It, of course, different, but something like, I do not say exactly, you know, but the, but the uh, you know, unit performing the same function. Wo sam, kete ho sakta hai. Hona chahiye, ho jana chahiye, ho sakatha, okay? Yeah. So, do we have similar elements in your mother tongue? Please take a minute and write. Please take a minute and write. You can do a term paper on these things. Please write. You can do a term paper on auxiliary or modal auxiliary verbs can, could, shall, should in your mother tongue, okay? In all our languages, in all natural languages, we have these things, okay? And we constantly make choices. When you came to IIT, you had a feeling, oh, I went to medical college. I was going to go to the film institute. What a boring place. Okay? But anyway, because your you know, parents are happy, you know, and we need jobs, we have to go to IIT. Okay? But anyway, because your parents are happy, and we need jobs, so you know, uh, you come. Take anything. If flying planes can be dang dangerous, if flying is a noun, if flying is a gerund, then planes is object. But if flying is the adjective, not grounded planes, but flying planes. Grounded planes are not dangerous. Flying planes can be dangerous. They can fall upon you. Okay? We have, we constantly make choices from the class and once we make the choices here, when we see we say can or may, then we are also under obligation to take a particular word here. After can, we told, cannot take a noun. Can you take a noun here? Can you say I can teacher? Can you say I can uh, film? You cannot say I can film. You can say I can see a film. I can watch a film. I can make a film. Okay? I can hate a film. You know? 
you have to have things like that. So, language constantly has a dual structure. Please read the book I have given you. Some of these concepts can be difficult for us to understand the first time, but not difficult if you give sufficient time or talk to me at length. If Let us summarize. I will stop this unit here. The first unit, design features of language, we talked about lots of features. We said language is species specific. What does it mean? Please. Oh, only human beings have it. Only human. It is a biological gift to human beings like flying is to birds, swimming is to fish, crawling is to reptiles. Okay? Next, language is species uniform. What does it mean? Only human beings, sorry, all human beings, rich or poor, you know, JE or otherwise, IIT Madras or IIT Bombay, does not matter, okay? uh, they all have language. Language is culturally transmitted. What do we mean? We learn it only after we hear it, only after we see it used. Language has variations. What does it mean? Come on, please make a mistake. Does not matter. There is no punishment. Changes from place to place. Yeah, it is not the same. You know, it differs from village to village class to class, in India caste to caste, the same village two caste is speaking two kinds of language. Is it true of Telugu? It is true of Tamil, it is true of Hindi, it is true of Maithili, it is true, you know, many languages. In India we have more caste than class specific language, region to region, job to job, okay. Then language is vocal, you know, it is primarily vocal, writing is a representation of language. Language is open ended. What do we mean? Yeah, you can add, you can lose, gain and lose words. Okay? Language is arbitrary. What do we mean? No logical connection between meaning and word and the object, correct? Language is creative. You can always say new things in new ways. You can make old words mean new things. Language is systematic. That means it has units and rules, combinations and permutations, and meaning depends upon these structures, these combinations and permutations. Language has the feature of displacement. What does it mean? It can go beyond time and place, beyond here and now. Language has dual structure. What do we mean? It has a class structure and it has a combination structure, paradigmatic and syntagmatic structure. Wow, you are engines, lovely. This is the test, okay. Name the design feature applied below. Even the best of parrots cannot utter a complex sentence or a new word. Species specific. Many great poets have come even from backward castes and poor classes. Species uniform, lovely. Tan and not have the same sounds, but not the same <coughs> meaning. Ah, combinations, lovely really. Mother is called differently in different languages. Varies or arbitrary, you know, meaning has no. Similarly, work out some examples for a, each of these features. I am going to mail this, these PPT slides to you. Work out these features. You will have this as part of your quiz next month. Okay. Any questions? Thanks. Have a good day. Please.